We've all heard of Elon Musk, Bill Gates, the Rockefellers, and the Rothschilds. And if you haven't, well, the one thing they all have in common is they're rich. Really rich. But what if we told you their wealth is nothing compared to one of, if not the, richest men to ever walk the planet? A man so rich that even if you combined the wealth of the aforementioned modern millionaires, you still wouldn't come close to his amount of crunkle. Well, this channel is called The Richest for a reason. And Augustus Caesar, a man worth $4.6 trillion, just might literally be the richest. Let's dust off the history books and explain just who he was, how he got so wealthy, and what happened to all that sweet, sweet money after he was gone. Augustus Caesar was born September 23, 63 BCE as Gaius Octavius. He played a pivotal part in world history as he came to be the first Roman emperor before his death on August 19, 14 CE. He was known for his many admirable traits, including his astounding levels of patience, his efficiency in ruling a kingdom, and also his technical skill and prowess. When it comes to emperors who did wonders for their people, Augustus Caesar is basically the prototype. Historians cite him as the main reason Rome enjoyed its prosperous and peaceful era, known as Pax Romana. He was the real deal, and we haven't even begun to talk about how wealthy he was. But before we get into Augustus Caesar's wealth, we should give you some perspective on the wealth of emperors at this time. Believe it or not, Augustus Caesar was the great nephew of none other than Julius Caesar. Yes, that Julius Caesar, the one from the Shakespeare play, and who met his end uttering the now famous words et tu brute. Julius Caesar played a hugely influential role in young Augustus's life and even saw him as a son, as evidenced by him formally adopting Augustus as well as Augustus's son and named him as his chief personal heir. Apparently, Julius Caesar was the one that first introduced the young future emperor to politics and even took him out on military campaigns as well as victory tours. These guys were close. So, just how much money did Julius Caesar have. Well, it's tough to say. On account of the conversion rate of the money used at the time, the sesterti is nearly impossible to accurately figure out. And other factors like figuring out how much owning land in ancient times equates to dollars in modern times. So we'll start by saying this is just an estimate. But what we can say is that Julius Caesar left every male citizen in Rome 300 sesterti in his will. And we know that he left Augustus around 75% of what was left of his fortune. This equates to around 530 million sesterti, and we aren't even talking about land, crops, livestock, and all that good stuff. In today's times, that would be around 750 million dollars. What can we say? As Mel Brooks put it in History of the World Part 1, it's good to be the king. But what about Mr. Augustus Caesar? We mentioned he was arguably one of the richest men to ever walk the planet. So, just how much was he worth? And how did he gain such a massive fortune? One that dwarfs the bank account of even THE Julius Caesar. Estimates put Augustus's wealth at a mind-shattering $4.6 trillion. That's trillion with a T. And getting to a trillion ain't easy. And frankly, he had some help. We already told you that his great uncle Julius left him a rather impressive amount of dough in his will. So, right off the bat, Augustus was off to a good start, and he was only 18 when he received this massive lump sum from great uncle Jay. And get this, when Augustus Caesar was officially emperor of Rome, he was wildly underestimated by his cohorts and potential conspirators. Under his rule, Augustus restored Rome to being a republic, and was the mind behind the financial reforms that led to the Principate, or the first era of the Roman Empire. It was a time known as Pax Romana, an era of peace, prosperity, and wealth. Augustus also reformed the monetary system while simultaneously greatly expanding Roman territory, which is where he dipped his toe into the Trillionaires Club. Actually, wait, he had 4.6 trillion. That's a little more than just dipping your toe in. You're a full-on trillionaire and then some by that point. As history professor Ian Morris put it, Augustus personally owned all of Egypt. You heard that right. The pyramids of Giza? Yeah, those were Augustus's. The Sphinx? Yeah, that was Augustus's too. 
All of that land? You guessed it, all Augustus's. To put it another way, he personally owned the fifth of the wealth of an empire that was responsible for approximately 30% of the entire world's gross domestic product. Now, that's how you become a multi-trillionaire. So, just what did he do with all that money? Well, besides maintaining a military and kingdom, he was known for constructing massive architectural wonders. The Theater of Marcellus and Forum of Augustus come to mind, but his magnum opus may very well be the Temple of Mars the Avenger. Yet, historians say that on a personal level, Augustus had no interest in personal luxury. Basically, he was a multi-trillionaire, but didn't let it go to his head. What a guy! But constructing these massive structures takes time, and a lot of money. And while we don't know the exact price of the Theater of Marcellus, there have been think pieces about how much similar structures cost including the Colosseum. Estimates put a huge $435.3 million price tag on the Colosseum. So that should give you some perspective on just how much it took to build these ancient masterpieces. Augustus lived a full and fruitful life up until his death on August 19th, 14 CE, at the ripe old age of 75. Does that month's name now sound suspiciously like our favorite emperor? Well, there's no coincidence there. Augustus named the month of August after himself. Before, it was known as Sextilia, which means sixth in Roman. We gotta say, we think August has a better ring to it. Nice job, Caesar. After his death, he was succeeded by his adopted son, Tiberius, and the line of Roman emperors continued. But before we go, we want to talk a bit about who the richest man to ever live was. Some say it was indeed Augustus Caesar. Others will tell you it has to be King Solomon, worth an estimated $2.2 trillion. Others will say it was Jacob Fugger, who started the first European welfare housing program and was worth around $500 billion. So what's going on here? Why are so many people cited as the richest person of all time when clearly Augustus Caesar beats them all with his $4.6 trillion. Well, that's the thing. It's not so clear. See, wealth during these early years of civilization was tied directly to land, or even empires. On top of that, many of the records we have today have been exaggerated due to oral accounts over the years. So depending on who you ask, some may say Genghis Khan was the richest person to ever live. Some may say Akbar the Great. So take all these estimates with a grain of salt, and know that they are just for fun. But make no mistake, these folks were rich. Like, really, really rich. Let's not beat around the bush. Augustus Caesar was wealthy. Filthy, stinking, unfathomably wealthy. Hey, when you personally own all of Egypt in 63 BC, uh, yeah you're gonna have quite a bit of dough to your name. It's kind of incredible to think that one of the richest, if not the richest men to exist, lived so long ago. But if you think being a multi-trillionaire is a thing of the past, think again. It's been reported that within the next 60 years, Jeff Bezos will become a trillionaire himself. And after that, it's just a matter of time before he gives Augustus Caesar a run for his money. But that's a story for another day. We'll see you next time, right here on The Richest.